Hello everyone, welcome to COMP 251. In this video, we are going to continue our discussion about applications of a stack and we will see two more um, applications here. The first one is um, an algorithm to convert infix notation to postfix. So, um, as we mentioned in um, the previous video, Working with infix um, expression is going to be difficult in terms of writing uh, a parser, a, an algorithm to work as um, infix expression as input directly. I mean, computing the, I mean, evaluating it directly from uh, infix notation. So usually um, in computer science, we, uh, if we are going to evaluate an infix expression, uh, we either use um, an expression tree um, which means that you read the the infix expression and convert it to an expression tree uh, which is going to be a tree that the all the internal nodes are going to be the operators and all the uh, leaf nodes are going to be the operands and uh, basically writing an algorithm to uh, evaluate the expression um, from the tree is going to be much easier so um, for example if um, i have an expression like 2 multiplied by 3 minus 2 minus uh, divided by 2 minus 1 and um, the rest of it it's just like you know the expression tree will look like this where for example 2 multiplied by 3 will be um, you know represented in this way which you can see that the, this is going to be the left children of this division operator that you can see that in, in fact, in my expression, um, when I'm reading this expression, you will see that 2 multiplied by 3 should be divided by 2 minus 1. So uh, one of the, the right operand of the division is going to come in from this subtree. The left division is coming from this subtree, which is going to be, again, the result of this one is going to be 2 minus 1. So, as I said, every internal node is going to be an operator. The, uh, the operand of that operator coming from the result of the left subtree and the right subtree. That the left subtree and right subtree itself can actually grow and show um, a more complicated expression, or it can be a leaf node that shows an operand. So I don't want to talk about um, expression tree here. This is something that uh, we will talk about it briefly later and then we talk about trees. But here I'm going to talk about the second approach that we directly convert um, the infix expression to postfix and later on using the, the other algorithm that we have already discussed, we can um, evaluate the postfix expression. Um, so here, the algorithm that I'm going to talk about is how we can convert um, an infix expression to postfix directly. This one can be done using a stack. And basically, actually, even the, the first one, uh, approach that was converting the infix expression to um, an expression tree, that one was also done using a stack. Um, basically, both of these algorithms are going to be some uh, example of... Um, stack applications but i'm going to focus on the second approach that we directly convert the infix expression to its equivalent postfix so um, before i actually give you an algorithm let me actually uh, give you some idea that how we come up with the algorithm although um, i don't want to really spend more time on explaining how to find the algorithm but uh, let's just see some facts about uh, infix expression converting infix to postfix so assume that i have an expression like this one and i wanted to convert it to its equivalent postfix notation if i write its equivalent postfix notation it would be something like um, a b c d multiplication plus you can see that c will be multiplied by D, it will be added by B. So I have actually kind of preserved this, um, you know, the higher precedence of the division. So, uh, sorry, the parentheses. So this part will be actually calculated first. Then um, 
for example, the uh, operand E and then division. So it would make sure that the operator uh, division will be applied over E and the result of the parenthesis, which is here. And then um, you see that what we remain is just um, applying this subtract between this one and the result of this part wholly, which actually at the end I will put the minus. So this is going to be the result. What are the facts that we can get from this? Uh, I mean, comparing um, an infix notation with its equivalent postfix. The first thing that is clear here is that the order of the operands are not changing, right? As you can see, if I forget about the parentheses and the operators, um, here I have A, then B, then C, D, and E, and the order of those operands are exactly the same as in the postfix notation. So, but how about the operators? Uh, the operators are, the order of the operators are changing. You can see that this minus actually comes at the end of the um, expression, the postfix notation. And for example, here, what I have in the parentheses is coming in a, um, you know, um, consecutive part of the postfix notation. I don't have any parentheses, but it's just like parentheses tells me that this part of the infix notation should be done, um, you know, all of them should be done together. And one more thing is that, for example, the order of the, uh, um, the I mean, addition, and the multiplication has changed. I mean, first multiplication comes and then the addition comes, right? So the thing is the order of the operators are changing. Some of the operators needs to wait uh, and then will be actually printed later. So where we are going to keep those um, operators? The answer is a stack. We are going to use to use a stack, keep the operators in a stack, and then based on what uh, is coming next, we will actually understand what the, where sh I should actually put them. The other thing to know is that the parenthesis. Parenthesis is just like when you see an opening parenthesis, just like you see it here. Opening parenthesis just tells you that, okay, uh, you have created a new space. It's just like whatever has been done before and after should be getting out of this part. So it's just like when you see a, an opening parenthesis, you should keep that opening parenthesis so that whenever you see the closing one, you would um, you should actually just finish whatever you are going to do with the content of the opening parenthesis. So all of these vags, I'm going to combine them and write down an algorithm at the end um, that uh, is going to be um, actually working for converting an infix notation to postfix. So the main thing to actually understand here is that the stack is going to help us to uh, to give the correct order of the um, the operators, um, the operators that we have, we should just know that um, the order of them might change, but not randomly. Some of the oper operators might actually just wait because their precedence probably is not as high, and so they will wait to be applied later. So again. Um, just like what we did in the algorithm to evaluate a postfix expression here, I need a stack and here I'm going to deal with the input um, expression as an string um, and I will read it from left to right token by token. And I will actually just show you that for each token, based on what is the token, if either it is an operand, if it is an operator, or if it is an um, opening parentheses, if it is a closing parentheses, so you can see that I have four possibilities here. In the previous algorithm, we just evaluating a postfix expression, so we just had two possibilities. Either you have an operand or you have an operator. Here, we have opening and closing parentheses as well. So it's just like this is my algorithm. I will read the infix expression from left to right, token by token, 
and um, so for each token it's it has actually four possibilities either it is an operand open parenthesis operator or close parenthesis i will show you that for each one what would happen let me actually just uh, you know the full algorithm is here but i wanted to explain it over an example to make it uh, easier to understand so i would start reading the um, the input test string token by token the first token that i am read uh, i i see is going to be an operand right so the thing is because the order of the operands is not changing i don't need to keep them in a stack whenever you see an operand basically you can just write it down in the output the order of the operands is not changing you should just know that where you should when you should uh, actually write down the operator in between the operands so the first rule is that whenever you see an operand just write it down in the output string or you can just think about it in this way that the output string is going to be an empty string and you just concatenate the next token to that so here um, you see a, an a so you just actually write it down in the output string so the output string here is going to be a the next token to read is going to be an operator okay so what if I see an operator? Should I should I write it down? Of course not. Why? Because this operator, we are actually converting from infix to postfix, right? So the operator needs to wait to come after all of its operand. You have already seen one of its operand, but you haven't seen the next one, and you don't know what is going to be the operand for this one, this operator, what is going to be the second operand. Right, so you have to keep it and wait until you see the its next operand, and then you can write it down. So where should I keep it? I should keep it in a, a stack. So negative this minus will be actually pushed to the stack, and it will be wait until its turn actually come, and you can actually write it down, add it to the output string. So. Uh, I just actually simplify the algorithm. The thing is, when the stack is empty, you would uh, push the operator to the stack. But later on, we will see some examples that, okay, what would happen for um, actually this case, what would happen for this case, and so on. So just let it actually keep in the stack for now, and then we will continue. The next token that we can see is going to be an opening parenthesis. Okay, an opening parenthesis just tells me that I am creating a new space. So this part, whatever is inside this part, should be actually converted to postfix and it should be consequential. So all of them should come uh, together. Okay, so I will put it in the stack just like as an indicator to tell me that whenever I see it's matching closing parenthesis, I would end up this environment so i need to put it in the stack so whenever you see an opening parenthesis push it to the stack the next operand that you will see is going to be the next token that you will see is going to be an operand right what was the action for the operand you would just write it in the output string right so b will be actually concatenated to the output string the next token that you will see is going to be an operator the action that I do here is that you would double check the stack. Okay, if the stack is empty, it just tells you that, okay, I just saw an operator and I don't know uh, its second operand, right? And I don't have anything else in the stack to be worried about. So you would push it to the stack. But what about um, the case that you have um, a stack which is not empty um, and there is um, an opening parenthesis on top of it? In this case, uh, still you would actually just uh, deal with the stack as an empty stack because opening parenthesis just tells you that, okay, I haven't seen anything else before this operator to be worried about. Okay, so in this case, again, I will push the parenthesis, the, sorry, the operator, the plus, inside the stack, and I will actually wait for plus 
for the second operator uh, operand of the plus. And you can see that the second operand of the plus is going to be C multiplied by D. Let's see that how we are going to deal with this one. The next token is going to be an operand, right? Or action was, if you see an operand, just write it down in the output. So, so far I have A, B, C in the output. The next um, token is going to be very interesting. The next token is going to be an operator, right? So what should I see with this operator? Should I just directly put it in the stack or not? This is the part that is interesting. So again, for multiplication, definitely you have to push it to the stack because you haven't seen its second operand. You have C, C, but you need to actually also see D, put it in the output, and then you need you can actually write down the multiplication. So in multiplication, all the operator needs to be pushed to the stack. But for some of them, you might actually do some other actions as well. The thing is, uh, before multiplication here, I haven't seen any other operator that has higher precedence. If I saw, for example, another multiplication here instead of this plus, what should you do? In that case, you would say that, okay, B multiplied by C multiplied by D. If you had such a thing, when you are seeing multiplication here, you would see another multiplication in on top of the stack, right? This one is on top of the stack. So this one needs to be printed in the output because uh, this one, the operands for this one have already been seen. B and C have both of them actually have been written. So in that case, you would pop this one. You, you see that this one, you actually keep it. Let me actually use a different color. This one, you would keep it because it needs to be pushed to the stack. But this multiplication, which is on top of the, in, on top of the stack, it needs to be written in the output. So in that case, you would pop it from the stack. So the action is that you check the top of the stack and you pop all of the operators because everything that is on the stack is going to be either operator or open parenthesis, right? So you pop all of the operators which has higher precedence or equal, um, I mean, equal precedence with the one that you are actually working on. The one that you are working on is going to be this one, right? So I have multiplication. If I had some other multiplication or division on top of the stack, you would pop all of them and write them down. But in this example, the one which is on top of the stack is going to be a plus, which has a lower precedence. No, okay. So I'm not going to pop that because that plus should be applied after you applied the multiplication. Okay, so I'm not going to touch anything. What I'm going to do is just push the multiplication to the stack as well. Okay, now let's actually see that what would happen next. The next um, token that I have is going to be an operand. Again, what you are doing is just adding it to the output. Okay, the next um, operate in the token that you can see is a um, a closing parenthesis. Okay, a closing parenthesis tells you that, okay, I'm done with the environment that has been created by the an opening parenthesis, which, where is the opening parenthesis? It is in the stack, but I don't know where is it still. I just don't, I just know that there should be some opening parenthesis in the stack. This closing parenthesis tells me that whatever should be done in the in the open inside the parenthesis should be finished so what i'm going to do is just all of the operators that hasn't been uh, you know dumped in the output they are going to be inside the uh, the uh, inside the stack one by one i pop them and write them in the output so you would first pop multiplication then you would uh, uh, pop plus and then the next actually token that you will see there until you, you continue and pop all of the operators until you reach to an opening parenthesis. Whenever you saw the opening parenthesis, you see that, okay, I'm done. I have written everything about the content inside the parenthesis. You just 
you need to also pop the opening parenthesis here and you will be done so this is the action that you need to do you will pop everything from the all the operators from the stack until you see an opening parenthesis and opening parenthesis will be popped as well so this is going to be the the final results i mean so far until this token so now let's see that what would happen to that this multiplication and plus that we push them to the stack and now we pop them the order of them has been preserved properly you can see that multiplication has been popped first so c multiplied by d will be calculated first then plus will be applied to b and the result of this part the thing is everything has been preserved because when you saw the multiplication you didn't touch plus plus would wait in the stack right until its turn comes so you keep plus in the stack and then you push multiplication and then later on when you are popping so you first pop plus because it has higher precedence and then you pop uh, sorry you first pop multiplication because it has higher precedence and then you popped a plus okay and the whole content of the the parentheses has been uh, dumped here in a sequential way in a consecutive way so everything is put together here so let's see what is the next um, actually token the next token again is an operator you see when you have an operator it should push to the stack but before pushing it to the stack you should just make sure that every other uh, i mean previous operators that i have seen um, if i need to write them in the output i do if i don't need i don't touch anything and i push it to the stack so when you see this um, division you look at the stack the stack is not empty it, actually the stack has something in it but the operator that you have in the stack is minus minus has lower precedence than a, a division so because division needs to be applied before multiplication uh, sorry before uh, uh, subtraction you don't touch this one you will keep it and then you also push division in over the stack as well anyway operator needs to be pushed to the stack because you have to see its next operand the next token is going to be a, um, an operand right you just um, at, mm, concatenated to the output okay now i reach to the end of the string what should i do you can see that there are some operator in the stack they need to be dumped in the output and you just simply just when you reach to the end of the stack just look at the uh, when you reach to the end of the string just look at the stack and pop all of the operators from the stack and put them uh, concatenate them to the output so the first division will be actually popped out and then subtraction will be popped out minus will be popped out so this is going to be division and then a subtraction minus so you can see that the order has been preserved properly definitely when you have a division here it needs to be applied over this one and this one and this has a higher precedent than this actually this minus you can see that this minus waited in the stack until it applied at the end of the postfix um, expression so this is the full algorithm that uh, we have for all of the cases that we have if it is an operand just put it in the uh, output if it is an opening parenthesis just push it to the stack because it is an indicator for us if it is an operator you have to push it to the stack but wait you have to check what is on top of the stack so if the stack is empty you just push it to the stack you don't need to be worried about the previous content if uh, the top of the stack is some operator you have to double check if the the top of the stack is an operator which has higher precedence or equal you would pop it and dump it in the output otherwise you would just actually don't touch it and push your content uh, your operator to the stack
If the top of the stack in this case is an opening parenthesis, if the top of the stack is an opening parenthesis, again, you just think about it as an empty stack. You just uh, don't have anything to pop, right? You just uh, push your operator. In the case of closing parenthesis, you should check the stack, everything in the stack, all the operators in the stack should be uh, dumped in the um, and concatenated to the output until you see an opening. That opening should also be popped. And be careful, if you see a closing and you just keep popping all the uh, operators from the stack and you didn't see any opening parenthesis in the stack, it means there is an error, right? It's just like you don't um, have a, a matching parenthesis in your uh, input string and there is an error there. At the end of the uh, reading the full string, you should just double check the content of the stack and uh, wherever for all of the operators, you just um, pop and dump it to the output. So here, um, a question that I have for you is that what is the time complexity of this algorithm? You can see that I have a loop here that iterates over the all the tokens of the input. So um, uh, for each token, there are four possibilities, right? Uh, what is the cost of each of these possibilities? This one is pushing, so the cost of pushing is constant, so the cost of this one is constant. If you have an opening parenthesis, you are also... Um, Sorry, with this one, you are writing it in the output and the cost is constant. This one, you are pushing in the output, the cost is constant. For the case of the operator, you would push it to the stack, right? But you might actually apply a couple of pops as well. Because all of those pops are going to be constant, at the end, the number of pushes and pops here will depend on how many operators you have. So for each operator, you will push it to the stack once and you will pop it from the stack once. So in total, for each um, actual operator, a constant number of pushing and popping from the stack. So this is going to be constant as well at the end. For the closing parenthesis, again, you are just applying popping, and so those are popping that will be applied over the operators. This is going to be constant as well. So in total, the time complexity of your algorithm is going to be depending on the number of tokens, so it is going to be linear. And you don't need to read your input string more than once. Everything will be read only once, and this is going to be done in linear time, which is... Um, I mean, the most efficient algorithm that you can get for this example. So here I'm actually showing you a couple of other examples. Um, if I have um, an input string, something like this one, what would happen? You can see that the thing is I have here two uh, plus that both of them has the same precedence. But let's see that what would happen in this case. If I apply my algorithm here, um, Okay, the thing is, um, I should probably didn't put the output here, but that's fine. Let's just actually remove this one. I'm going to show you that what would happen in the um, uh, case of uh, this example. So you read the input uh, token by token from left to right. A, you just, you have an opera and you put it in the output. You have a plus. It is an operator, you look at the, the stack, a stack is empty, you put your operator here, okay? The next token is an operand, you put it in the output. The next token is an operand, sorry, an operator, what should you do? You should look at the stack, and if the top of the stack is an operator with the same precedence or higher, you would uh, pop it and actually put it add it to the output. The top of the stack is a plus. So plus here will be dumped in the output. And be careful, this plus that you dumped here is not this one. This is going to be this operator. 
Okay, this is important. Although the result of adding A, B, and C is the same if you add B and C first or A and B, but the interpretation is important for me. It is important for me to know that A and B will be added together first. Okay, so you can see that it preserved that left associativity. So in fact, A and B will be added first and then the result will be added to C. Okay, because this plus will be applied over A and B in my in, uh, postfix result. Okay, let's continue. This plus has been popped and has been actually inserted in the output, right? So the content of the stack is empty. Then you push this plus inside the stack. Okay, the next token that you see is going to be C. It is an operand, you would write it here, you reach to the end of the string. So you look at the stack, all of the operators in the stack will be pumped, will be popped and actually put in the concatenated to the output. There was only one plus will be actually removed and this is going to be the result. Everything has been done properly. So now you can see that if you have seen Okay, it's just actually telling you that this is the correct output, not this one. Okay, if you see an infix expression like this, the postfix expression, the correct postfix expression is this one, which means that A and B will be added together first. The result will be added to C. This is important for me when you see that the operators here are of the same precedence but they are different in terms of actually the uh, they are different this is one of them is plus the other one is minus so if you have something like 10 plus 6 minus 5 the thing is you wanted to add these two first 16 and then minus 5 from the result which is going to be 11 okay so if i apply the algorithm over this one again this is going to be something like this you have an operand you put it in the output you have an operator you push it to the stack because the stack is empty you have an operand you put it in the output you have an operator you look at the stack all the operators of equal or higher precedence will be popped so plus will be popped and then you put minus here you continue the next um, output the next the token is going to be c it will be actually uh, concatenated to the output then you reach to the end of the string you look at the top of the stack every operator will be popped and this is going to be the result okay so what would happen for the case that okay i, I have actually an error in my input infix that's uh, infix expression let's see that what would happen in this case in this case so when you reach to the end of the i mean when you reach to a closing parenthesis that you can see there is no mapping for a uh, matching for this or, or closing parenthesis you can modify your algorithm or i actually know the, the algorithm i already actually have that that's telling you that if there is no opening uh, parenthesis in the stack it means there is an error so this error will be catched easily here so this error will be catched by your algorithm let me show you another example how about this one what is going to be the output of your or algorithm uh, over an input expression like this so let me actually just apply it for you just put it in the it is an operand you put it in the output the open parenthesis you put it in the stack an operand you put it in the output an operator you look at the stack a stack um, the top of the stack is an open parenthesis so there is no operator to be worried about you just push the operator here the next token is going to be an operand the next token is an operator you look at the top of the stack all the operators of higher precedence or equal will be pumped will be popped so uh, multiplication will be popped and dumped in the output and then you will push plus on top of the stack 
the next operator is going to be the next token is going to be an operand you will put it here the next token is a closing parenthesis you look at the stack and every operator in the stack will be popped until you see an opening parenthesis so plus will be popped and then you see an opening parenthesis it will be popped as well and you will actually done with this token the next token is going to be you reach to the end of the string right you would stop you look at the stack if there is any operator you pop it there is no operator so you stop so the thing is um, this type of errors um, might not be actually catched at the by your algorithm here but don't worry when you actually you are missing here clearly there is an error right you need an operator here but these um, errors can be catched later on when you are converting your uh, you are evaluating this in postfix expression if you have an algorithm to evaluate the postfix expression you would catch the error in this um, so postfix expression clearly there is an error here there is an operator missing and it will be catched by the other algorithm okay so uh, here is another example i actually have written the answer for all of these i put uh, many examples here for you uh, you can just go through them um, i put the answer just try to apply the algorithm again and again it just helps you to understand and digest the algorithm um, and for all of these examples that i put here i also actually added the answer so uh, you can double check your answer with the one that I posted here. Okay, the final application of the stack that I'm going to talk about in this uh, video is going to be function calls. Um, I mean, implementation of function calls in computer using a stack query. So I wanted to show you that how the computer actually deal with function calls um when you are for example writing a program in java in in any programming in any high level programming languages you might write some functions right some methods that uh, you call them and we wanted to see that how the computer can um, basically um, implement um, executing a function calls in fact inside the computer in the memory cpu will um, just i mean Java virtual machine will actually use a stack in the memory. It will just deal with a part of the memory as a stack and um, it uh, actually keep track of, um, I mean, store all of the local variables, all of the return values of the functions, all of the parameters that you are passing to the functions inside that stack. But let me actually show you that how it would happen. This example that I'm going to show you, this is just a simple example, and I, I don't want to actually show you lots of details. Um, in fact, this, con um, this, con this topic, this subject, will be covered in um, computer architecture, and if you um, take the compiler course later on, it will be covered there uh, in more details. I just wanted to give you the idea that how the computer will actually deal with that, but definitely there are more details here to be uh, worried about, but um, we don't really need to actually discuss them here. This is beyond the content of this course. So just assume that I have a simple piece of code, um, that I have uh, my main method, um, there are some actual variables defined here, and there is another method that I'm calling it in my main method. I just wanted to know that how the computer will um, actually execute this, how it can understand the difference between the local variables in the main method and some actually other function calls. So as I said, inside the Java virtual machine, the memory, a part of the memory will be dealt just like a stack. So we can think of it as, okay, the, my memory, uh, I mean, a part of the memory is just like a stack. And inside the stack, there will be some, um, the computer will actually just create some stack frame. For each of the functions that will be called, one stack frame will be created. So the first function that will be called actually is going to be the main method, right? So there will be a stack frame created on the, um, in the memory 
that inside this stack frame, all the local variables will be written there. So for example, the variable A, the variable B, if you had more variables, all of them will be written here in this stack frame. Okay, so here I have A and B. A will be initialized as 3, so let's just actually deal it with that in this way. The computer will read this line, A will be actually created and initialized. The second variable B will be created, and what is the value of that? The value of that coming from a function call. So the computer needs to execute this function call. So the computer needs to call this. This function call is actually involving passing a parameter as well. What does the computer do? The computer will just automatically, whenever you see a function call, the computer will create another stack frame on top of the previous one. So another stack frame here will be created. Okay, so the shape of that stack frame is just like, um, this is just like a part of the memory. It's just like um, the computer will assign a part of the memory in on top of this stack just assign it as okay this is going to be a space assigned to this function call so all of the local variables of this function call will be written there not only the local variables the parameters that you are passing will be actually uh, copied there as well because in fact this parameter that's going to be a here is going to be a local variable d in this function right so we put actually that uh, value there as well and the return value will be written in this stack frame as well but there are some ordering that you should be actually you will um, uh, i mean the computer will take care of so the space just on the, you know, after the previous stack frame, the previous stack frame, this one was a stack frame for the main, okay? So the value that just in the memory, in terms of the addresses of the memory, on top of that is going to be preserved for the return value of this function call. Okay, I will talk about it later. And then after that, all the parameters, if you have one or more than one parameters that you are passing, for example, here I just have one, all of those parameters will be actually copied here. So before the control flow jump to here, all of this will be done. So the this part of this space will be preserved for the return value and all the parameters will be written after that. Okay, so this is going to have a new value as the... Um, local variable inside this um, function call. So the control flow of your computer will move from here to here. So the, no, the active frame, the active stack frame is going to be this one. The computer doesn't know this, doesn't actually see this stack frame anymore. The computer just see this part of the memory. Okay, and so all the variables will be written here. So if you have a variable name like B here, that is going to be in a separate space in a different stack frame, which is not active and the computer doesn't see that. That's why it will be preserved there and you wouldn't actually touch it. So when you actually come back, it is still there. So you, have your, you will see another space in the memory that this local variable b will be written there and all of actually other local variables all of them will be written in this stack frame so the computer will just go through this execution and do all of the um, calculation um, and at the end you actually return something so that return value before um, the control flow jumps back will be written here okay Remember, I said that this is going to be the space, the address in the memory, which is just exactly on top of the stack frame for the previous function, which is going to be this one. Okay, the function call for uh, the stack frame for main. So whenever the control flow go back, the control flow will go back here. It the stack frame here will be released. The active stack frame will be this one. You don't see this memory anymore, but you know where is the 
return value. The return value will be just exactly on top of the end of the address of the stack frame, the active stack frame you are in. So that return value is here. You would just take it before anything else. So the computer will take that return value and um, just for example, we will put it in B and you safely just release the memory. So for example, if after this line, you had another function call, this space has been released because the active stack frame is this one, no? So another stack frame will be created over this one. And for example, the computer will go to that um, function call executed and again, just um, do all of the calculation and then just come back. So this is exactly the way that the computer deal with the function calls and how is possible that you have, I mean, how it is possible that you have different copies of the variables and how you know where you should come back because whenever you, re you release this stack frame, you immediately go back to the previous top of the stack, which is going to be this function call. For example, if here you had another function call inside this one, another stack frame would be created on top of this. And so um, you would call that function, for example, here you would call another function, um, another stack frame will be created. And so the execution will be done over this memory. And then after that is that will be released. This one will be the active uh, stack frame. And whenever it is done here, this one will be actually the active stack frame. So it is, I mean, we are able to execute the function calls just because we have, we deal with the memory as a, as a stack. And whenever you actually just push something, it will be pushed on top of the stack. Whenever you are done with some executing some function call, that space will be released. And immediately the previews actually uh, top of the stack will be the active stack frame. And this is very nice. In fact, when I talk about the recursion, you will see that how nicely um, the, I mean, treating the memory as a stack will help us to execute the recursive functions in the computer. So that's it. This is um, um, the second actual application that I wanted to uh, discuss here. And uh, in the next lecture, we will talk about uh, recursion.